tonight in the Sunshine State, the Orlando Pride and Utah Royals FC meet for the third and final time at Exploria Stadium. Welcome in, I'm Josh Tolan. With me is the keeper, Jen Cooper. And Jen, Orlando wraps up a three-game homestand as they look for their fourth win of the season, but they take on a tough Utah club who has won two in a row, and a win tonight for Utah would propel them into that fourth and final playoff spot. And they're taking on a Utah club that has scored six goals in their last two games. Utah's never done that before. And Utah on the outside looking in so close to getting a space in that top four. Orlando, of course, just looking for that win to get them out of the basement. For Orlando, a tough game last week against Houston, and they have a tough one tonight. They're gonna try to defend Amy Rodriguez, who has been on absolute fire for the Utah Royals. Just like back in 2014, when she was the runner up to the Golden Boot, she's had a great run this season four and four straight games earlier in the season. And then with the return of press, the two of them are really clicking and she earned deservedly so goal of the week honors for last week. One of the best players in the NWSL for Orlando though, Chioma Ubogagu helps lead the way for the Orlando Pride. This Texan who can play for the, the England national team, so close to making the World Cup squad. She's had three goals for Orlando this season, but Mark Skinner has told us she's got so much more she can bring to this team. And you're looking at one of the most consistent players these last seven games that Mark Skinner talked about in Chioma Bogogu. She'll have a tough time going up against the defense of the Utah Royals. But when we return, exciting action for you tonight from Explorer Stadium between the Orlando Pride and Utah Royals. The starting 11 next. Welcome back to Exploria Stadium in Orlando, Florida, as we get set for the Orlando Pride and Utah Royals MC, as we'll take a look at our starting 11. First, we'll start out with the Utah Royals FC, who come in on a two-game winning streak, scoring six goals in their last two games. As Jen, we take a look at the starting 11. Nicole Barnhart leads the league in shutouts with seven. And Katie Stengel, again, dropping back, coming off that front line. Laura Harvey thinking she's a lot more useful there. And of course, with everybody trying to contain Kristen Press and Amy Rodriguez, it means Lola Bonta and Katie Stengel have more opportunity to take shots. Obviously, teams liking to focus on Kristen Press and Amy Rodriguez. Can Utah open up like they did last week, finding goals from Lola Bonta and Katie Stengel? Now we'll take a look at the starting 11 for the Orlando Pride. A couple different faces in there due to two red cards from Julie King and Marta from last week. And of course, Emily Von Eggman out with an ankle injury. She's gone back to Australia. So Kristen Edmonds getting her first start in a year for Orlando. 
Claire Emsley, just her second start on the season. And Marissa Vigiano, the rookie who had the winning goal a few games ago, up on the front. Aaron Greeny now sliding into that center back position where Julie King was last week. We'll see how that plays a factor tonight for the Orlando Pride. But what a night, what a matchup between these two clubs. Three points on the line. Orlando looking to get out of the cellar. Meanwhile, Utah Royals FC hoping to leapfrog and move their way into four spot currently held by Rain FC. As here we get a look at Rachel Hill, who's also in the starting lineup tonight for the Orlando Pride. Last week, she came on as a substitution on the season. Orlando, three wins, 10 losses, two draws for 11 points. Utah Royals FC, seven wins, six losses, three draws for 24 points. But again, they have been on a run these past two games, picking up six goals in those two games. And those six goals are huge. Um, a team that really struggled to score, especially on the road. Before those three goals at Rain FC, they had only scored two on the road all season. Another great night in Orlando as we get set for the Pride and Royals FC. For the Orlando Pride, this is the final game of a three-game homestand. Meanwhile, Utah Royals FC are in the second of three on the road. For Utah Royals FC, they are led by Laura Harvey in her second year with Royals FC. Orlando Pride, Mark Skinner in his first season for the Pride. Lee Padui, our head official tonight for this contest. Third and final meeting between these two clubs. The regular season series is the first tiebreaker. If any teams are tied in the playoff standings at the end of the season, of course, it's highly unlikely that Orlando and Utah will both be in contention for the playoffs. But you've still got that pride Thing to fight for, no pun intended, of, you know, we don't want to let Utah take the entire series, especially with this game at home. And we are underway at Exploria Stadium between Orlando Pride and Utah Royals FC. Three points on the line as Claire Emsley will move it up the pitch. And now she'll turn back and play towards midfield to Joanna Boyles. There is Kristen Edmonds getting that first start since last season. We'll see how that plays. And this year she's only played in four games. This is now her fifth. That cross is going to go off the boot of Katie Bowen and out of play for our first corner of the night. For Orlando Pride, they come in off a tough loss to the Houston Dash. We talked about it at the start, the two red cards that were handed out, and then ultimately Rachel Daly getting the lone goal in that one from the penalty spot. Meanwhile, for Utah Rose FC, they're coming in on a 3-1 to -one victory over Rain FC. The service from Imsley, high lofting ball, headed up. Headed down by Green, Hill with the shot, and that hits the side and that will find its way out for a goal kick. And Jen, for you tonight, what are you looking for out of both these clubs? I want to see calm organization from Orlando, and I love that they're getting pressure this early to get this corner. Almost getting something on frame, not quite hitting the post going right, but I want to see them calm, organized, collected. Nicole Barnhart leads the NWSL in clean sheets with seven. This goes to midfield and brought down by Greening. Greening, a rookie out of CU, plays it forward to the other rookie, Marissa Vigiano. Vigiano tries square ball to Bogogu, gets it on the deflection, now cleared away by Rachel Corsi. And now seeing Orlando play on the front foot, trying to Get Utah Rose FC in that tough defense to play on their back heels. So many of Utah's wins earlier in the season were 1-0 wins. So you know how happy Laura Harvey had to be to get those, those three goal games in the last two games. Vigiano, an offside flag is up against Marissa Vigiano. And then conversely, we've seen Orlando have three goal games and still come out on the losing side, which is kind of crazy in soccer. For Utah Rose FC on the season against the Orlando Pride, 
have yet to allow Orlando to score a goal in the first meeting. They won 1-0, that one at Exploria Stadium. In the second one, they won at Rio Tinto Stadium. That one, 2 to nothing, with goals from Amy Rodriguez and Mackenzie Doniak. Greening out to Krieger. Zadorski. Edmonds on the far touch line. Ubogugu. Ubogugu down the line. Somehow keeps that in, and there's the whistle. Edmonds, a player picked up by the franchise in the first season, part of a trade with Western New York Flash, where they also acquired. Becky Edwards and I remember Tom Sermani the coach at the time talking about you know he was like oh they're just adding on this player okay and he was just surprised with the work ethic she brought and uh, what a great contributor she was and she ended up being in that first season the 2016 season the leading scorer for Orlando Pride with six goals. Sauerbrunn three time defender of the year plays a wide to Mallory Weber. Press. Corsi, the Scottish captain. Bowen. Boyles would drop this one back. Krieger. Kennedy surveying the field. Diagonal ball. Sauerbrunn. Rachel of course, will go near side to Mallory Weber. That ball taken away by Kennedy, but she gives it right back to Becky Sauerbrunn. Weber gets around the defender, but then plays it out. She was able to get around Clara Imsley initially, but unable to keep it in play. Allie Krieger playing her 50th game in an Orlando Pride uniform. Where she she passed 100 NWSL regular season games last summer, and as many fans were so happy to see, played her 100th U.S. national team game uh, earlier this year. For the Orlando Pride on the season, two wins at home, six losses, no draws. Meanwhile, Utah Rose FC away from Rio Tinto Stadium. Two wins, three losses, and two draws. One of those wins coming against this Orlando Pride squad. Vero. This one nodded back by Krieger. Finds Boyles. Boyles sends it across the pitch. Edmonds chases it down. Lola Bonta right in front of her. Zadorski. Ali Krieger. Kennedy in the circle. Knocked off the ball by Stangl. Stangl at midfield. Stangl getting her first goal of the season last week. It wasn't the prettiest of goals, but doesn't need to be the case always. And actually, Laura Harvey kind of liked it that way. Said it would allow Katie Stangl to get out of her head. She's had numerous games this year where she's been close to having a goal. Just hasn't found the back of the net. Maybe last week will open things up for her. And last season, she was the leading scorer for the franchise with six goals. You know that's got to start to bug a striker when they haven't found net. But like you said, it doesn't have to be pretty. Goes in the goal, still counts on the scoreboard. Sadorski switches sides. Greening. Aaron Greening gained her 11th start this season. Greening was another player that Mark Skinner talked about being here more consistent in these last seven or games or so. And that was really a big thing. He thought about during the beginning of the season, there was a lot of inconsistency from the club. But now in these last six or seven games, they've really got things together. And he's shown it with the amount of goals that they've scored and the way that they're playing with one another. Well, and now you're past that Women's World Cup window where you have a lot of absences. And more importantly, those rookies and also second year players who only got a little bit of time in the league last year as practice players or NTR players. With that many minutes under their belt, they're going to be more confident. They're, they've played together more time, and now they're playing under this coach. They understand what this coach wants from them. Now, foul will go against Mallory Weber. 
Weber earlier in the season, released by the Portland Thorns back in May and picked up by the Utah Royals. Krieger. Trying to connect with Vigiano and that's gonna be headed away by Becky Sauerbrunn. Sauerbrunn in her seventh year, 34 year old out of Virginia. So many great players have come out of Virginia and that's why I believe Steve Swanson, still the Virginia coach, should be in consideration for that U.S. Women's National Team head coach job, especially when he was coach of the, the U-20s when they last won the U-20 Women's World Cup, which did feature Chiamo Vogagu. Speaking of Steve Swans, there's a great Players' Tribune video about his relationship with Becky Sauerbrunn up on the Players' Tribune that you should check out and just talks about how Steve Swanson has helped her through her career. Second corner of the night for the Orlando Pride here in the ninth minute. The service. And that one's cleared away by the captain, Becky Sauerbrunn. Claire Emsley with that corner kick. Uh, she and Utah defender Rachel Corsi both called up to the Scotland women's national team for the upcoming FIFA window. They've got qualifier against Cyprus for Euro 2021. I know that sounds a long way away, but less than two years away, qualifying starts now. Rachel Hill turning away. Krieger in the circle, plays it out wide. Zadorski, the Canadian, press on her, Edmonds. And Lola Bonta knocks Emmons off the ball, but gives it right to Rachel Hill. Vero going over the top. Rodriguez. Rodriguez greening in front. Desiree Scott plays it out wide. Bowen. Press. Press on the return pass. Steps inside. Scott, near side. Brought down by Weber. Weber attacking the edge. Gets around Imsley. Square ball, and that one's gonna be played out. She was trying to find Stangle near the spot. Cleared out by Alana Kennedy. What a great extended attack by the Utah Royals. First corner of the night coming for Utah. Love that work by Weber to get inside, send that square ball, but they just can't get a final touch on it. Press now with the corner for Royals FC. The service, headed back. Sent back into the mixer. Pride. This is the first game. They will play three here in eight days. Next, they will have Chicago on Wednesday, that one in Chicago, and then they'll head to Washington. Boyles down the pitch. And this is where the standings can get really confusing because the number of games played is so rarely even for all the teams, especially when you have an odd number of teams. So. A note to fans, when you're looking at the standings, always look at number of matches played because your team might be in a really great position, but there could be a team right beneath them with a couple games yet to play. Press going wide to Rodriguez, headed back by Edmonds. 
You go back two weeks ago, it was the first time Press and Amy Rodriguez scored a goal in the same game. Edmonds down the line. That's going to be too far for Ubogagu. Of course, he knocked off the ball by Hill. Hill played back. And there is Becky Sauerbrunn stepping in front of Chiomo Bogugu to break that pass up. You can see even at 34 years old, Becky Sauerbrunn still one of the best center backs in the game, if not the best. Boyle's second year player out of North Carolina. Boyles is one of those players where it's, technically it's her second year, but she got such limited time last year, which I, I think is true for a lot of 2018 rookies. It's it's so great to see her getting an opportunity to get a lot of minutes uh, and to be a regular starter for Orlando. With the contraction of Boston last year, it meant very few players who were drafted actually got onto rosters. Skinner talked about how Joanna Boyles is one of the fiercest competitors on the Orlando Pride, just brings a winning mentality to the team, wants to win at everything she does, whether it's in games, whether it's in practice, and that's one of those things that you need on your team is that desire to win at all costs. Bowen will play this back. Especially in this league where standings are so close. We can mention the parody cliche as much as we want, but it is so close. Labonta. That one stolen away. Krieger. Vigiano. Vigiano turning away from danger. And then dispossessed by the destroyer. Gives it over to Veril. Veril cuts back, and now Vigiano takes it away. Emsley. Trying to get around Weber. Emsley controlling. Emsley towards the end line. Sends one across, and that one's cut out. Vero with left to press, tracking back. Boyles. Kennedy. Emsley sends one back post. I love the, ex the extended effort from Claire Emsley back in the corner to keep that ball going. Press trying to get by Krieger with the left, and that one stopped by Ashlyn Harris. Kristen Press so dangerous, just holding up on using her speed, and then she chose to use it right there at the very end to get by Allie Krieger. And well read by Ashlyn Harris. Gets past Boyles, works around Krieger, left foots, but Ashlyn Harris reads that so well. Doesn't come out and smother it. She holds her ground at the near post. Right decision. Ashlyn Harris made her 100th appearance last week for the Orlando Pride. Just the third NWSL keeper to play that many games after, of course, Nicole Barnhart and also Alyssa Nair. Hill plays to Emsley. Emsley can't possess that ball as that goes through her feet. Mallory Weber on the touchline. Tripped up is Emsley, no whistle. Crowd wants it, they're not gonna get it. Seemed like all the players were waiting for it too. Barrow, Spain's all-time leading scorer, moves it up the pitch. Oh, so good with the ball at her feet. Trying to cut that one through to Rodriguez, but Krieger there to intercept.
Weber with a little back heel to Vero. Vero trying to go back to Weber as that goes off Claire Emsley. Weber and Emsley fighting for that ball. Not a good angle to see. See who that'd go to, but clearly the players all thought a call was coming. Claire Emsley in her first season in the NWSL. She just came over a few weeks ago. Represents Scotland internationally. Played two years for Manchester City as well as two years with Bristol City. Wow, Emsley wrapping her leg around, <laughs> around Weber. Corner now for Utah Royals. One last played out by Orlando. Press lining up. Press on the year five goals and one assist for Royals FC. The delivery. Flick back by Vigiano and Lola Bonta there chase it down for Royals FC. Farrow. Press keeps it in. Sauerbrunn. Boyles going over the top. Scott. Press trying to sidestep Emsley. Corsi. Bowen on the far side. Stangle. Lays it off, press with the room to work with, cuts inside, press, creates more space. Sends it towards the far post angle. Stangle just elevated that one over the crossbar. Press coming down that left. Thinking, I was thinking she might take a shot there, but no, she crosses Stangle. Leans back just a little too much, which sends that ball over, but that's a combination I'm sure we're going to see again. Ubogagu. Kennedy. Ozzy lays it back. And now finds its way to the goalkeeper, Ashlyn Harris. Hill. Really loving the drumming from, uh, I think it's the Black Swan. That's what they're calling it now. Sidorski. That one nodded away. Rachel Hill in possession for Orlando. Playing it to Imsley, heading it on. And just not enough power behind that from Imsley. Bonta, a goal and assist in the last two weeks. For Lola Bonta last week in her goal against Rain FC, she just went right down the spine of the defense and no one stepped up to La Bonta. Both were, the defense of Rain FC were trying to cover both Kristen Press and Amy Rodriguez and just forgot about Lola Bonta. She was able to put it in the back of the net for the goal to help Utah Royals FC ultimately come up with a victory three to one. Bottom line, she's been involved in half of Utah's last six goals. Scott. And I like how Laura Harvey described 
the team, I mean, the, this new offense they're finding is embracing their threat as a team. That collectively they're more of a threat than they've been in the past. Weber. Farrell. Here's Press. Corsi in the circle. Scott. Scott and Rachel Corsi actually played together at Knotts County. Sauerbrunn. Diagonal pass. Vero. Vero cuts inside, drops it off for Press. Press stops, chips it up forward. Rodriguez trying to turn. And she'll play it out to Press. Going back post, trying to find Stangle. I don't know if that one was trying to curl in or she was trying to pass that to Katie Stangle, but great thought there nonetheless. Just inches from Stangle being in a position where she could have headed that past Ashlyn Harris's hand. Great work by Vero. Once again, it's Press sending it over. A-Rod can't do it, anything with it, so sends it back out. Again, in from press. Harris's hands get there much quicker than Stengel's head. Edmonds out of Rutgers. Sadorski from Michigan. Edmonds matriculated at Rutger, Rutgers right as a certain U.S. women's national teamer was graduating. So Kristen Edmonds took over the number 10 jersey from Carly Lloyd at Rutgers. Greening on the end line. Imsley. Nice tackle there by Desiree Scott, three-time World Cup member for Canada. Great tackle there. Edmonds still trying to control. I should say Alana Kennedy trying to control there. A little surprise there's not a call there when you have a player on the ground kicking the ball, but it's all those magic words, if in the opinion of the referee, dot, dot, dot. Upogugu outside Edmonds. Down the line. Going right there for Utah Rose FC to play it out for a throw. Chiyomo Bogugu on the season. Three goals, one assist. This plays pass there by Edmonds. Bogugu's grandfather played for one of your favorite EPL teams, Josh. Tottenham? Mm -hmm. It's funny, she grew up, I believe, a Chelsea fan or was it Arsenal? Arsenal. I can't believe in all of that mess that there wasn't a whistle. Weber. That one stolen away by Krieger, finds the feet of Vigiano. Vigiano the rookie. Scott. Here's Press. Press turning away, looking for someone to pass to. We'll go to Rachel Corsi. Corsi goes wide. Stangle. She was trying to pop that one around Kristen Edmonds, but unable to do so. And then a misplaced pass. And that's going to be out for a throw for Utah Rollers FC. Stangle. Interesting to see Stengel trying to play provider as opposed to sitting on the on the receiving end. But I think that's one of the things Laura Harvey was hoping to see with dropping her back in that midfield spot that historically has been Gunny Yonstarters. This is now the third game in a row for Gunny Yonstarter that she'll be used as a substitution. Scott drops back. Before that, she had started every game in Utah franchise history. Weber sends it in towards the spot. Rodriguez pops it over and out of play. And 
Nor Harvey had mentioned how last couple of games they had really found their form when it came to finishing, and it just seems a little off tonight. You look at Utah Rose FC, six goals in the last two games that they played. That equals the number of goals that they've scored from May 25th to August 3rd. It really goes back to Laura Harvey talking about embracing their threats, embracing getting the ball more to Kristen Press and Amy Rodriguez. And if that doesn't work, hopefully it'll open things up for other players like it did last week in Labonta and Katie Stangle. Well, I like how she said collective threat, that it wasn't just one or two players that, that making sure Labonta and Stengel knew that they were just as important to that collective threat. Well, that's the thing, too. You look at the opponents. How are they going to play Utah Royals FC? Are they going to try to just focus on shutting down A-Rod and Kristen Press and let other players beat them? Or how are they going to defend as a whole? Press going over the top to Rodriguez. Rodriguez with a shot. That one off the post. Great chance, Stengel. Shot with the left and that one right at Ashlyn Harris. But our best chance of the evening coming from Amy Rodriguez. Just I, hits off the woodwork. I love the look on Ashlyn Harris's face saying, guys, that was way too close. Rodriguez getting just past Krieger, taking the shot past Harris, but it hits the post, bounces back. And then Stengel's shot is an easy one for Harris to save, but Harris's face says it all. Guys, that's way too close. Best chance of the evening for either club. And then Katie Stangle actually had a great look on that follow-up. Just would like to see her place it in either corner there. She may have rushed it just a little bit. You know, that, that kind of unexpected rebound that comes to you when you, you want to finish where, like you said, that needed to go wide. When you look at last week's goal for Katie Stangle coming off an Amy Rodriguez shot that deflected off Megan Oyster, then hit the post, then found the leg of Katie Stangle and fell in for the easy goal. And then Katie Stangle, she would have a shot later that would be batted out and would find the feet of Amy Rodriguez and she would slot in the back of the net. Boyles, Greening. 31st minute, still scoreless between the Orlando Pride and Utah Rose FC. Josh Toll and Jen Cooper with you this evening. Three points on the line for both these clubs. Orlando Pride looking for their fourth win of the season. Meanwhile, Utah Rose FC looking for their eighth win of the year. This one somehow stays in on the far touchline. Edmonds into the area. That one played out, finds the boot of Katie Bowen. Great play there by Lola Bonta. They clear that one away from Kristen Edmonds. Vero. Just too much on that pass to try to link up with Amy Rodriguez. Hill giving chase. And there is the veteran goalkeeper, Nicole Barnhart. Barnhart. Goalkeeper of the year in 2013. That season she had 10 clean sheets. She has seven on the season. Weber. Emsley to her right. Weber cuts in with the right. And that one right on Ashlyn Harris. She saw that one all the way through. things that Laura Harvey talked about was she wants athletic fullbacks on her team. You can talk about Kelly O'Hara and what she brings, but Mallory Weber, she thought, is another player that can bring athleticism to the squad. A large reason why they picked her up after Portland released her. Ubogugu. Trying to cut inside. Bonta going over the top, a right to Aaron Greening. Greening will play this back to Allie Krieger. Orlando in the two games versus Utah Rose FC have yet to score. They've allowed three goals. This is the third and final meeting between these two clubs. And as we mentioned before, a head to head tiebreaker. It's the first tiebreaker in the playoff standing, so your season series can be a, de a determining factor. Now, it's highly unlikely these teams 
will be tied in the playoff standings. But we're getting at the point in the season where all of those tiebreaker advantages are, are being determined. So like tonight, Portland playing Washington. Washington has one win. It's their second game. Washington wins again. Washington has the series tiebreaker. Sauerbrunn at midfield. Plays it inside. Edmonds turning away from Rodriguez. And this will come back for a kick for Utah Royals FC. Sauerbrunn. Farrell, Stangel, back to Farrell. Little room to work with. Lays it back for Labonta. Stangel, Imsley trying to harass her. Corsi. Burn Greening going at it. Green will play it to Lana Kennedy. Over the top for Bogagoo. The Bogagoo into the area. Shot and that one blocked by Barnhart and then off of Chiomo Bogagoo. After that prolonged attack by Utah, quick counter from Alana Kennedy. Chiomo Bogagu on the run, gets the shot off with her left foot, but Barnhart comes out big, gets in her way, and the goal, the ball rebounds off of Bogagu for Utah to get the goal kick. For the Orlando Pride without Marta and Julie King tonight, but they're also without Emily Van Eggman for the remainder of the season, and she is having surgery, I believe, on her ankle. And she will miss the remainder of the season. Another huge loss for the Orlando Pride moving forward. And of course, the news a few weeks ago that Tony Presley was diagnosed with breast cancer, so she's been put on the D45 injured list. And we've all sent our well wishes to, to Presley. So good news, Alex Morgan is available to play tonight. We haven't seen that for Orlando since late April. Scoreless here in the 36th minute between Utah Royals FC and the Orlando Pride. The Utah Royals FC, 17 goals on the season. 12 of those come in from Kristen Press and Amy Rodriguez. Meanwhile, for the Orlando Pride, they have 16 goals on the year, but they have allowed a league worse 32. But again, these last really eight weeks or so, Orlando has looked like a much different team than they did at the start of the season up to the start where the players left for the World Cup. And they go April to, I believe it's June 3rd was the official date. Once they got past that stretch of six losses in a row, they have not had back-to-back -back losses since. Yes, look, since June 14th to the present, they've scored 14 goals in that time. Just two from April to June 2nd. A much different looking team. And again, a lot of it was adjusting to what Mark Skinner asked of his players. A lot of roster turnover as well with the departure of Juliana, Monica, Christine Nairn traded to Houston. We've talked about how important the draft is. You look at the eight different players that they lost for the World Cup. I believe it's ultimately nine when they picked up Claire Emsley, but we'll say eight. And majority of them are having major roles for this Orlando Pride Club. So you're looking at a lot of different players playing more minutes than they were used to, getting starts that they weren't used to. But it's really helped to build this team. Rodriguez. 
with the shot. And smothering that one is Ashlyn Harris. Amy Rodriguez with the best chance of a night earlier where she hit the left post. Orlando only had two draft picks this year, Josh, so a lot of the younger players they've picked up are players who declared for the draft but went undrafted, or players like Abby Alinsky, Joanna Boyles, who were drafted last year, didn't make teams because of um, you know, the, the contraction with Boston folding and are getting more time this year, especially with the expansion of the rosters. Minimum 20, minimum 18 moved up to minimum 20, maximum from 20 to 22, and the addition of supplemental players. That means all of these clubs can carry enough players to have 11 on 11 scrimmage and to give a player, a young player, uh, a little bit more time to develop. Unless, of course, like you said, they're sending eight players to the Women's World Cup, and then you're just thrown into the fire. Weber near side. Weber towards the end line, tackled away by Aaron Greening. Corner try coming for Utah Royals. This will be the third corner of the evening for Utah. Press. Kristen Press last week was the first time on the season that she did not have a goal or a direct assist in a game. Greening sliding under, getting her foot on it. Nice tackle, all ball. Well, and back to Kristen Press, there's only one player in the league, Josh, that has a higher goal per game ratio than Kristen Press. And I'm pretty sure you know which player that is. And she only leads the NWSL this year in yeah. goals once again, and Sam Kerr yeah. with 13. <laughs> we were talking about off the air, if Sam Kerr could get to 20, it's possible. It'd be difficult. It'd be the first time in NWSL history a player has reached 20 goals if that were to happen. Or 18 or 19. Yeah, I was so going to say the, the, she yeah. has the high at 17. The record, the record is 17 from 2017. And you keep in mind this being a World Cup year that she won't even have played as many games as, as she did when she set that record. Zadorski. Zadorski, two time defensive player of the year at Michigan. She was the minutes leader for Orlando last season, missing only one game. But of course, this season with international duty for Canada. So our minutes leader right now is Carson Pickett. Hill. Cuts one in. Vigiano with the right far post. And that one just tailed to the left. Hill sending it up to the 18 for Vigiano. Right puts it. It looks like it's on target, but it had just enough of a spin to go wide. Vigiano's lone goal. Vigiano's lone goal of the year coming against Sky Blue, and it was a rocket of a goal. Her first of her career. She's one of three players drafted out of Northwestern this year. First ever group of players drafted from Northwestern into NWSL. Boils. Boils pausing, now plays it out to Vigiano. Vigiano inside. He'll try and connect with the Bogogu. And right there is Nicole Barnhart. Sauerbrunn. Trying to turn away from Alana Kennedy. Corsi from Aberdeen, Scotland. A 
for Bonta. Deep ball, but no one there as that falls right into the arms of Ashlyn Harris. Greening striding forward, but right there is Kristen Press showing off her speed. Strange look to have the defender making the attack and the attacker coming back to defend. Kristen able to just get her foot in front of Greening to send that ball out. Hill can't control that pass and just gives it right back to Utah Royals. Utah Royals right now in the standing, sitting fifth with 24 points, two points behind Rain FC. They will play tomorrow. That one against Sky Blue. That will be at Red Bull Arena. More than 8,000 tickets already distributed, which means Sky Blue will break their franchise attendance record by more than 2,000, which is wonderful news to hear. Come on. 1 p.m. Eastern. Get this, Josh. That means that that's the fourth club this season to set a new franchise record for attendance. Rain FC looking at rebound tomorrow against Sky Blue. They fell to Utah Royals FC. Three to one. Edmonds trying to get by Labonta. Rodriguez. Vero finds the feet now of Alana Kennedy. Pokes it up in the air. Played out by Vero though. There is the final whistle for the first half. We are scoreless. 45 minutes done. Jen, your thoughts on the first 45? Well, first, first time since those last two games that Utah has not scored in the first half. Obviously not for lack of trying, but Orlando seems very composed, organized. They're shutting it down, but the question is how long can they keep that up? These two games previously between these two clubs have been close, just three goals scored total in those ones. But right now we are scoreless at half. We will take a break and we will return from Orlando. Orlando Pride zero, Utah Royals FC zero at half. Of course he knocked off the ball by Hill. Hill played back. And there is Beck Weber. Towards the end line, tackled away by Aaron. Great tackle there. Edmonds still trying to control. The rookie who been around the NWSL this week in week 18. Well, things got started on Wednesday. Sky Blue taking down the Red Star Stars. Two goals from Paige Monahan in that one tonight. Portland Thorns take on the Washington Spear. That one 10:30 Eastern, and then tomorrow on ESPN News. At Red Bull Arena, Sky Blue FC and Rain FC going at it. Another game, you look at all of these games, so many implications going on in terms of movement in the standings. One through nine, different teams can jump up or fall down. A lot going on, but Sky Blue with a big win earlier. They go at it again on Sunday versus Rain FC. But you got to look at what else is going on in the NWSL. Well, October 27th, 4 p.m., Cary, North Carolina, NWSL Championship will happen. You can go to NWSL.com to get your tickets for that one. Always a great one to go to. And that, again, happening October 27th, 4 p.m. in Cary, North Carolina. We'll take another break and we return highlights and scores for you between, or I should say highlights and stats between Orlando and Utah.
45 minutes in the books between the Orlando Pride and Utah Royals FC. First half done as we'll take a look back at the highlights from the first 45 minutes of action between these two clubs. Early corner kick from Orlando. Can't quite get it on frame. Rachel Hill hits the post. And just popping back to Hill and just gets the volley and then off the post. Kristen Press taking it the other direction. Getting past Boyles. Getting the shot off. But no, Ashlyn Harris has that one smothered. That was the first real good chance of the night for either team. That one coming from Kristen Press, but Amy Rodriguez would have an excellent chance. Stengel dropping it back to Press. Press again coming up that left side. She did that all through the first half. Sending it in. Stengel can't bring that down to get it on frame. Stengel with her first goal of the season last week. Yes, it was a fluky goal, but maybe that will get her out of her head. We'll see what she does here in the second half for Utah Royals FC. Again, Press sending it up on rushing Rodriguez right in front of Harris. Gets it past Harris, but hits the post. Bounces back to Stengel's foot. Nope, easy shot. Ashlyn Harris takes that down to the ground, no problem. Press and Rodriguez nearly connecting for that assist to possible goal, but just hitting off the woodwork. And then Stengel trying to follow it up, but just right at the chest of Ashlyn Harris. And then a quick counter by Orlando. Ubogagu gets the shot off. Barnhart smothers it and bounces it back off of Bogagu to get the goal kick. Look at Ubogagu, second on the team in scoring for the Orlando Pride with three goals. Rachel Hill sending it back to the top of the box. Vigiano turning it. It looks like it's on frame, but it wings just a little bit left to goal. As we take a look at the first half stats, Jen, what stands out to you? Possession is pretty even, but it felt like in that first half that Utah had more of the chances, was down in Orlando's end of the field a lot more. For Utah Rose FC, you look at it, shots on goal, five to one. So clearly, like you just said, proving that they were in that attacking end more than Orlando was. But coming out of here at in the second half, Jen, if you're both these coaches, what are you telling your teams? For Laura Harvey, I'm telling them you got to finish. Not in a high pressure way, but just like give yourself that extra half second to pause and take the right shot. You don't have to rush it. Orlando, they have to stay organized because as long as they, they do, they can get that quick counter and get on the scoreboard. For Utah Rose, this is their second of three games on the road. They won earlier against Rain FC. They are sitting with a record of seven wins, six losses, and three draws. Meanwhile, for the Orlando Pride, this is the end of a three-game homestand. The next two will be on the road. They're playing three games in the span of eight days. Their record on the season, three wins, 10 losses, and two draws for 11 points. And we wonder maybe if we'll see Alex Morgan here in the second half. That is a possibility on the year. She has played in four games on the season. That would be a much needed boost in terms of on the attacking side, especially without having Marta on the squad tonight. Right, she's, she started all four games before she left to join the U.S. national team for Women's World Cup preparations. Came back from France with a little bit of an ankle injury. They've given her a rest. She's recovering. She's available tonight, first time since late April. We get set here for the second half. For Utah Royals, they're coming in off back-to-back -back wins in those two games. Three goals each, but right now, Orlando doing a good job holding them scoreless. We'll see if that remains the case here in the second half as they are going to have their work cut out for them. But for Orlando Pride, can they find a way to get more shots on target? That's going to be a huge thing. Just one real shot on frame. But other than that, Utah Royals, Nicole Barnhart, once again with a solid back line in front of her, helping to keep Orlando at bay. And those shots that hit the post, or hit the crossbar, hit the outside netting, they don't count as shots on target. So when you add those to the ones that already are on target, it, you know, it, I think it amps up the threat. And, and like we've mentioned in the first half, Laura Harvey talked about the collective threat of this team. It's no longer just, oh, it's all Christian Press, or it's all Amy Rodriguez. They've got more to the attack than that. For Utah Rose FC, they're looking for their third win against 
away from Rio Tinto Stadium in one of those wins they defeated the Orlando Pride, their other one, a win against Rain FC, their first win ever against Rain. And we are underway here in the second half. And Vera will play this back to Rachel Corsi. Sauerbrunn plays it wide. Mallory Weber. Weber pushing forward. Good tackle there by Alana Kennedy. Alana Kennedy in her fourth year out of Australia. Kennedy won a championship with Western New York in 2016. And she ended up being traded after that season to Orlando in exchange for Sam Wittemann, who is the only first round draft pick that Orlando has ever had. She was their, she was the number 10 overall pick in that 2016 draft. Vero. Leaving her way out of traffic. Stops. Trying to flip that one through to Stangle. Stangle now gets on her boot to Rodriguez. Rodriguez with the left and just no power behind that one. And diving on top of it is Ashlyn Harris. Ashlyn Harris played the second half in the US Women's National Team recent victory tour match against Ireland at the Rose Bowl. 3-0 win for the Americans. And of course they have Two more Victor Tour matches coming up in the FIFA window. They'll be playing Portugal August 29th and September 3rd. There's another veteran, the 33-year-old, seventh year out of North Carolina. Kennedy. Given away. Labonta. Labonta comes up with a little limp. Looks like she'll be able to walk this off and be all right. Labonta, one of the most consistent players for head coach Laura Harvey this season. Also mentioned Amy Rodriguez being another one, as well as Desiree Scott. Talks about Becky Sauerbrunn just being Becky Sauerbrunn and everything that she brings to the club. Stangle. Out wide, and that one knocked away by Aaron Greeny and then cleared out by Claire Emsley. Katie Bowen on the ground for Utah Royals FC. Katie Bowen, the New Zealander out of Auckland. Looks like she and Abogagoo just kind of locked feet. It's not going to feel good. Bring the 16th overall pick in 2016 for FC Kansas City. She played collegiately at North Carolina. We'll take another look from a different angle between this collision. Yeah, you just see Abogagoo get on the top of the foot of Katie Bowen. Never feels good to get studs. An area where the skin is just so tender. Katie Bowen, no goals, no assists on the year. She was the youngest player to represent New Zealand. She's appeared in three World Cups for the Ferns. So many of those New Zealand players start so young. You look at not only uh, Kitty Bowen, but also like Abby Urseg. You know, <laughs> I think Urseg, this was her fourth World Cup. And then that doesn't even count U20 and U17 World Cups. And of course, Tom Sermani, who used to coach Orlando Pride, after he left the Pride this year, he took on the head coaching job for the football Ferns, coached them at the Women's World Cup this summer. Stangle, last year's goal leader for Utah Royals FC. She had six last season. Amy Rodriguez leads the club this year with seven. Kristen Press behind her with five. Sent in by Bowen. Edmonds will send it away with the left. That comes right to Laura Harvey. She'll give it over to Lola Bonta. Laura Harvey still the winningest coach 
in NWSL. If you define that by number of wins, not overall record with win-loss tie. I've never calculated that, but most wins in NWSL for Laura Harvey. You look at so many coaches now. Mark Parsons right behind her, Vlako Andonovsky, Rory Dames. Paul Riley. Paul Riley. They were creeping up, but then she got those two wins. Paul Riley in North Carolina competing in the International Champions Cup. That one tomorrow will be on ESPN. Corner kick here for Kristen Press. The delivery. Sent back, but pops up high into the air. Press giving chase, heads it towards Vero. Barnhart. Sauerbrunn. Weber. And she'll just go right back to Becky Sauerbrunn. Vero. Rodriguez plays it wide. Bowen. Vero trying to get around Boyles. Boyles wins this one. Labonta. Vero chipping it ahead. And Krieger playing it back towards midfield. Weber far side. Imsley right there for Orlando. Step over. Weber towards the end line. And Imsley is able to come back, plays it out. Corner kick coming for Utah Royals. I love how Utah is getting everybody involved in the play. And one side, they're not making it get forward. So the switching sides work it up the other way. Press now on the far side for this corner try. Inward swinging ball, punched away. That was intended for Katie Stangle on the near post, but right there was Ashlyn Harris. Sauerbrunn. Sends it towards the area. Rodriguez. The cross. And that one cut out on that low liner. Labonta. Corsi. Scott. Scott. Outside of Rodriguez. Dispossessed by Ubogagu. Rodriguez. Trying to find press. That one off, Greeny, another corner coming for Utah Royals FC. I'm really impressed, Josh, how organized Orlando has, has stayed, even with all this pressure from Utah. Even if it's taking them time to get it out of the back, they're staying calm. They're using each other to keep moving the ball around. The delivery. And that one grabbed by Ashlyn Harris. Once again, Katie Stangle in the vicinity for Utah Royals FC, but Ashlyn Harris able to get both hands on that ball. Ashlyn Harris, one shutout on the season. Scott. Loses possession, Vigiano plays to Rachel Hill. Cuts around Scott, Hill with the right. She's set up for that one, but unfortunately for her, that one rises into the stands.
Bowen. Labonta. No one there for Utah Royals FC as that's intercepted by Allie Krieger. Ubogagu. Ashlyn Harris, one of the first players acquired by this club in that initial expansion draft where she was pretty happy to be coming back to her home state. Not a lot of players remain from that original 2016 squad. Sour run. Goes wide to Weber. That pass too far for Weber to get to. For the Orlando Pride on the year, they've been outscored 16 to eight at home this season. Right now scoreless here in the 57th minute between these two clubs. Labonta. We play this right back to Katie Bowen. Barrow taps it forward, but no one there for Royals FC. Vigiano backing up his Corsi. Imsley with the left. That one takes deflection. Headed away by Labonta. Stangl. Press overruns that, allows Allie Krieger to get back and knock this one out of play. And there's not a lot of games in NWSL, Josh, that end up scoreless. You know, we've only had four total this season. Haven't had one in, in about two months. And sure, we got a lot of time to go. I don't, I don't anticipate this one ending up scoreless too, but shows you just how close the competition can be. You know, you think, Orlando really struggled last game. You know, lost two players because of a red card. Utah coming off two three-goal games. You're thinking Utah is going to run up the score. Haven't seen that yet. When you look at the best chances coming in the first half, really both from Utah. And a Kristen Press try as well as an Amy Rodriguez shot that went off the woodwork. On the other end, you had Chioma Ubogugu get stoned by Nicole Barnhart. Nicole Barnhart won two gold medals with the US Women's National Team, also part of two World Cup squads. And back in the day, she made her national team debut, get this, Josh, as a forward. I'll explain in a little bit. Rachel Hill, shot and that one! She couldn't bend it in as it just found its way outside the frame. She had time to measure that shot attempt. Gets past two defenders, gets the shot off with the right. Barnhart making the dive, can't get there, but it's beyond frame, so she doesn't have to worry about it. Great look there from Rachel Hill, ultimately resulting in a miss, but still maybe something like that can give you a little bit of confidence going forward. Greeny now pushing forward for the pride. And Sauerbrunn right there. Sauerbrunn defender of the year, three straight years, 2013, 14, and 2015. I almost think they should just name the award after her. Or maybe you save It'd be that. be a reasonable you, name. You <laughs> save that for retirement. Boils. Weber to Stangle. Stangle inside Labonta. Trying to chip it over. Shot! And that one takes a deflection off Harrison, finds the back of the net. Kristen Press does it once again for Utah Royals FC. She gets past her mark. One touches it, 
Harris gets a hand on it, but can't keep it out of the out of the net. Great feed from Labonta. I love the reaction from Harris too, but it's just got too much momentum on it for her to keep it out. Well, Lola Bonta two weeks ago an assist, now gets an assist tonight. Kristen Press with her sixth goal of the year. And you go back to last week was the first game that Kristen Press did not have a goal or an assist in a match this season. Imsley, Sauerbrunn. Press with Sauerbrunn to her left. Goes that direction. Boils. Edmonds. Ubogugu. Orlando looking now to respond, trying to find an equalizer. Goal kick for Utah Royals FC. On the season when Utah scored first seven wins on the year. Now's a good time to continue my Nicole Barnhart story. Uh, she earned her first cap in fall 2004 as part of the U.S. Victory Tour for the 2004 Olympics. She wasn't on that squad, but they called her in. They needed some backup players because, of course, your Olympic squad's only 18, and they had some injuries. And then they had some extra <laughs> injuries, and they were kind of short in a game, and they, they brought her onto the field and asked her to play forward, and she said, okay. So then she got her first cap as a goalkeeper several months later in 2005. Little known fact about Nicole Barnhart. Edmonds, Ubogugu. Takes a deflection. Vero. Goes outside and Vero tripped up and that's gonna draw a yellow card on Kristen Edmonds. First start, first yellow I think for Edmonds on the season. Kind of clips the player. Understand why that's called. Got to get the ball instead of the player. First yellow card for either team tonight. Corsi. Much different look than what we saw last, last game, home game for Orlando. Two red cards, both of them straight red cards. Never before had there been an NWSL game with two straight reds or two reds of any sort. We talk about that and for Utah Royals FC, they do not have a player with two yellow cards yet on the season. Press. Whereas we've already seen Christine Nairn and Nikki Stanton, Nairn with Houston, Stanton with Chicago, sit out because of yellow card accumulation. Of course, Julie King sitting out this match for the red card, and Marta has to sit out not only this match, but the following match uh, based on an extra suspension given from the NWSL Disciplinary Committee. Lepanta, and that one takes a ricochet off Rodriguez, but finds the feet of Katie Bowen. Rodriguez cuts in with the left, and that one punched down. Hill. Off the head of Lola Banta, Ubogagu. Hill plays it down, trying to find Vigiano and Claire Emsley. Played high into the sky by Sauerbrunn. And then a collision there between Barnhart and Emsley. Hearing it from the crowd right now. Claire Emsley, all out hustle on that one. 
That did not look good for either player. That one's always tough. Barnhart, leg extended. This will take a replay. Emsley coming on with her head up so she can't see Barnhart. Barnhart coming out with that leg up, ready to kick the ball. Oh, gets Emsley right in the abdomen. Still can't tell what they're going to call. Allie Krieger pleading her case. We should see our first substitution for Utah here. Gunny Youngstarter will come on, and Katie Stangle will head off for Royals FC. That one to zero lead, Gunny Youngstarter now brought in for defensive purposes. So you have Desiree Scott, the destroyer, and now Gunny is becoming, becoming the finisher, or the closer. I guess she should be the closer. Third game now for Gunny Youngstarter that she's appeared as a sub. And Jan Stotter could get the call for Iceland uh, Euro qualifiers coming up in the FIFA window. I haven't seen an official list for that yet. Kind of be surprised if she's not called in. Boils, Ubogagoo. And that threw ball just behind the feet of Marissa Vigiano. who has the assist on the Kristen Press goal. Corsi, Scott, and that one knocked away by Upogagoo. Krieger placed it Emsley. Scott, Emsley knocks it away, but finds the feet of Lola Bonta. And Lola Bonta tripping up Marissa Vigiano. Foul awarded to Orlando. And now making her way on, Alex Morgan for Chioma Ubogagu. Her first appearance since late April for Orlando Pride. And you know this crowd is loving it. Emsley, say towards the back post, headed down. Corsi able to recover. See what kind of jolt that Alex Morgan can give this Orlando Pride Club. Zadorski cuts inside. Headed forward. And Corsi right there. Morgan giving chase. And it's not often that you see Alex Morgan coming off the bench. So she's more rested, has more energy than most of the players on the pitch. She should be more dangerous. Vigiano, Kennedy. Kennedy sends it in with the left. Imsley! Which Mark Skinner was talking about, Claire Imsley, and what she's brought to this club, and how she can work her way inside the pitch and outside, and just so dangerous. And how many times this past week she was finding the back of the net in practice. He thinks it's only a matter of time before you see some electricity from the young player out of Scotland. And unlike a lot of European players, Josh, Claire Emsley went to college in Florida. So she did not have the issue of, oh my God, nobody told me it was this hot. I remember Stephanie Roche coming to Houston for the Dash in 2015. She arrived in March when it was maybe, you know, 70 degrees, and she said, wow, it's really hot today. 
but I felt really bad for what was to come. That's well, even like when we were talking to Laura Harvey, she talked about one of the big, biggest differences that people don't realize when they come over from England is how hot it is, the humidity, the travel, just the weather from different areas the, and how it plays a factor. Yeah, different, different cities and then, and then factor in for Utah, altitude. Here's the foul on Claire Emsley as she just puts her shoulder into Gunny Young's daughter. And Kaylee O'Hai with the Houston Dash made a comment about the heat recently I thought was really smart. She said, it's, it's not an advantage. It's not like altitude that you can adapt to and train for. It's just something you have to manage. Young's daughter, Rodriguez out to Labonta. Bonta lays it back for Bowen. Down the line. Boils. Here's Alex Morgan, dispossessed. Bowen, or Morgan fighting through as it comes to the feet of Alex, Alex Krieger. Playing for to Rachel Hill, but there is Becky Sauerbrunn. Kennedy pauses, Vigiano. Sneaking up on Boyles was A-Rod to take that ball away for Utah Royals FC. Vero, Zdorsky right on top of her. Of course, he tripped up by Emsley. Danny Weatherholt will come on for the Orlando Pride, and off will go Joanna Boyles. Weatherholt, the all-time games played and minutes leader for Orlando Pride. She is one of those players who's been with the club since the inaugural season in 2016. She was a fourth-round draft pick in 2016. Mark Skinner talks about how she think, he thinks that she has so much potential, and we haven't even seen the best of her as of yet. Utah one to zero off a Kristen Press goal in the 60th minute. Assist by Lola Bonta. Kennedy, diagonal ball. That one too far to handle. For Utah, they are looking for their third road win of the season. Sauerbrunn. Porcy. Edmonds with Emsley to her left goes inside to Morgan. Too much weight on that pass for Claire Emsley. Really liking what we're seeing from Kristen Edmonds this evening, Josh. Fierce defense, but also getting up there in the attack occasionally. She's already played more minutes in this game than her previous four appearances this season combined. Dorsky, Krieger, Edmonds, Emsley sends it in near post, Morgan! Now 
Alex Morgan still searching for that first goal of the season. She tied a pretty impressive record at the World Cup, scoring five goals against Thailand. Only once has a player scored five in a World Cup game before that, and it was Michelle Akers in 1991 in the inaugural World Cup. Vero, Labonta, try to go out wide to press, and that pass cut off by Aaron Greening. Press with the right. Utah Rose FC currently in the fifth spot in the stains with 24 points. Rain FC right ahead of them with 26. Then you have North Carolina in third with 28. Chicago in second with 29. And Portland at the top with 30. Last two seasons, North Carolina ran away with NWSL, NWSL Shield, especially last season, setting a new record for points, wins, goals scored. This season, it's still up for grabs. Headed away by Corsi, but right to Weatherholt. Plays it wide, and no one there for the Orlando Pride. Nice little back heel. But Greening unable to get there, but played out by Gunny Jonstadter. Kennedy. Press. Here's Vero. Vero at the center of the park. Through ball to Rodriguez. Rodriguez with an opportunity. Rodriguez shot. Blocked. Goes over and in. Ashlyn Harris made the initial stop, but the momentum takes it over. And now Amy Rodriguez with the second goal of the night for the Utah Royals. Vero took her time, finally found the pass she wanted to send. Cheeky little ball from Amy Rodriguez to chip. Over, notice she uses the outside of her foot, it looked like, to send that over. Ashlyn Harris, who did get a hand on it, but, but could not stop the momentum enough to prevent it from going in the net. And now Kristen Press and Amy Rodriguez once again scoring in the same goal, or same game. Yeah, they've broken that curse. That curse is long over. Claire Emsley, she's the player getting looked at right now on the near side. Emsley, like you mentioned earlier, named to that Scottish roster for the Euro Cup. Her and Rachel Corsi. Claire Emsley scored the first goal ever for Scotland in the World Cup, doing that against England. I'm sure they'll be excited to get back into qualifying for the next tournament so they can kind of move on from what was ultimately a very disappointing Women's World Cup for Scotland. They were minutes away from advancing and they let Argentina get back in the game, change the whole thing. But they can turn right back around, get into Euro 2021 qualifying. And of course, there's also the potential for Scotland players to play for Team GB, Team Great Britain, at the 2020 Olympics. For Amy Rodriguez, now eight goals on the season to match her jersey number. And also ties her second in the league with Kristen Hamilton, who's had a phenomenal year for North Carolina. And back in 2014, Amy Rodriguez was second in the Golden Boot standings behind Kim Little, who had 16. A-Rod had 13 that season. Rodriguez still holds the record for most, by far, playoff goals of anyone in Indy-Bruxelles. She's got six to her record. And now Orlando trailing by two with a little more than 10 minutes left. Trying to get one goal to just give themselves a chance to get back into this. They've used two subs in Alex Morgan and Danny Weatherholt. Played outside to Vigiano. Vigiano with the left sends it across. And on 
the back post. Great chance there for Claire Imsley. Just not able to get the touch behind that shot. Like she gets that ball in, she can't quite connect with Kennedy in the middle or Emsley rushing that far corner. Barnhart having such a solid season, like you mentioned before, leads the league with seven clean sheets and of course the overall uh, career clean sheets of 47 could be 48 if this result stands. And, well, and asked, uh, we asked Laura Harvey about that instance and having competed with Abby Smith last year for, for time, it kind of renewed her fire and also gave her some time to rest and recover. So she's healthier than she's ever been. Abby Alinsky checking in for Marissa Vigiano. Alinsky, a second year player out of North Carolina, started her collegiate career at Illinois. Alinsky, another one of those players who drafted in 2018, didn't really get a lot of opportunity to play. Thankfully, with the expanded rosters this year, has seen a lot more time. This is the third and final meeting between these two clubs. Utah Royals now has four goals scored total against Orlando. Orlando has yet to score against Royals FC. Krieger. Switches sides. Edmonds. Zadorski going wide. Towards the area. Kennedy heads it forward. Cleared away by Labonta. Now Scott right to Weatherholt. Morgan flicks it back. Barnhart, her career high in shots in a year is 10. Currently sitting at seven, just three away, looking to move that to eight. If this score holds, Hill cuts in. Trying to find Morgan. Knotted down by Weatherholt. Hill. Press. Working her way to the touchline. Greening right in front of her. Alinsky coming over to help. Sauerbrunn. Farrow. Play this one all the way back to Sauerbrunn. Morgan, nice little ball, but Kennedy not able to get there. Weber coming back to help. Greening. Surveying. Imsley. Just can't collect as it falls to the foot of Bowen. Plays it now to Labonta. Gets it right back from press. Labonta in midfield is Vero. Vero slows it up. Young Stoddard goes wide. Weber. Utah just being patient with her possession. I just want to close out the game clean. Utah Rose have seen out eight goals in their last three games. They've only allowed one during that time. 
they continue their run as the best defensive team in the league. They've only allowed 15 goals on the season. You look at it, back earlier in the year, they were having trouble finding goals, but still finding a way to win one to nothing, keep it close, and ultimately rely on that defense. But now these past two, even three weeks with tonight, you can say things are changing now. With the lineup change that they made with Katie Stangl now starting, and Gunny Young started coming on as a sub to close things out for Royals FC. And I think a little less pressure too on, on Vero to have to be the only playmaker. Hill sends it across towards the spot. Belinsky. Greening. And other than one match between Orlando and Washington Spirit, there the remaining NWSL schedule will not see any U.S. national team call-ups or any call-ups affected. There's just one Orlando Spirit match that's scheduled in the FIFA window, and that was, of course, the clubs choosing that. Into the area. And Kennedy just sends that up and above the bar. Now Mackenzie Doniak will come out for, or come on for Kristen Press. Press leaves, she scored the first goal of the night. That one in the 60th minute. Doniak scored her first goal since 2016, earlier this season against Utah. Sorry, against Orlando at Utah. Zidonic, another former Virginia Cavalier. Spent a good chunk of time on the injured list, but it was great to see her get back with Utah, get on the field. And I loved her, it, it's hard to call it a celebration, but her reaction when she scored that goal against Orlando, her first goal in two and a half years, just like, yes, I can do this. Joy and relief. Edmonds. Here's Rachel Hill. Hill inside. And corner coming for the Orlando Pride, trying to find their first goal of the night. Smart of Gunny to get in there and just say, I'm going to send that out. Doesn't matter. It's not pretty. It's not clean. We're just getting it out of here. Inward swinging ball, near post. Greeny. Emsley sends it across. Edmonds. Krieger into the area, nodded away by Scott. Zdorsky. Collision there between Zdorsky and Rodriguez. One thing I, I think that we're seeing different this Orlando team compared to a few months ago was they, they haven't quit. They're still pressuring, they're still getting up there. It seems like they're playing like it's a 0-0 game, and that's the kind of fight you want to see. Harris. I like the calls from the stands for Ashland to shoot it from midfield. Pull off a Carly Lloyd. Vero trying to find Rodriguez, but well out is Ashland Harris. And she'll just send it the other direction. Vero. And hey, as we saw Wednesday night at Sky Blue, 
Listen Air came way up across midline to help assist the equalizer goal. Four minutes of stoppage time will be added on in this one. Utah Royals hoping to hold on. Looking for their eighth win and third win on the road. If Utah is able to control this remaining four minutes, it'll be the third time this season that they have defeated the Orlando Pride. Barrow plays it to Scott. Scott has Rodriguez to her left, goes that way. Rodriguez, shot, and that one stopped by Harris. Harris has made some good saves tonight, but unfortunately for her and this Orlando Pride, two have found their way into the back of the net, as we'll see another substitution here for Royals FC, and Erica Timrak will come on for Amy Rodriguez. Amy Rodriguez scoring the second goal in the 77th minute, assisted by Vero Boquette. And replaced by Erica Timrak, the Rookie of the Year from 2013, the, the year that FC Casey basically swept <laughs> the NWSL Awards. Amy Rodriguez with her eighth goal of the season. And pretty close to having her ninth. I think she just overthought it a little bit. Ended up going right where Harris could stop it. Nicole Barnhart looking for her eighth shutout of the season. Royals looking to extend their winning streak to three. You look at what happened before this three game winning streak. They were winless in their previous six before that. They were really struggling trying to find goals. That is not the case anymore. Again, a lot of it was Laura Harvey talking about embracing their threats and what Kristen Press and Amy Rodriguez can bring to this club. Sent in towards the back post, headed down and out. Laura Harvey, one of those other names being thrown out there for, you know, a, a potential replacement for Jill Ellis with the, the head coach job open after the victory tour ends in October. Last week, Kate Markraft, former U.S. national team defender, being named the first ever general manager of the national team. And that's her first responsibility, basically, is, all right, who's going to replace Jill Ellis? Edmonds. Krieger pushes it forward. Knocked away by Labonta. Off the knee of Vero. Imsley turning. Alinsky. Greening. Young starter in front of her. Weatherholt. That one takes a deflection off Desiree Scott. Krieger. And Weatherholt sends it towards the area. Morgan trying to bring that down with her left, and that's cleared. Mark Skinner still in the technical area, very animated. It ain't over till it's over. A little back heel, but cleared away once again by Royals FC. Utah Royals FC just waiting for that final whistle. Krieger. Hill. There is the final whistle, and Utah Royals goes on the road and gets their third win of the season away from Rio Tinto Stadium in their eighth of the year. Jen, your thoughts on tonight's match? What a game for Utah. It took them longer than the last two games to get on the scoreboard, but once they did, 
they didn't let go. Another clean sheet for Utah Royals FC, their eighth of the season as they take down Orlando Pride 2-0. to zero. We'll be back with highlights and stats for you when we return right here. Utah Royals victorious with a 2-0 win over the Orlando Pride as we take a look back at the highlights from tonight's match between the Utah Royals and the Orlando Pride. The Orlando Pride, they would have chances, but just unable to capitalize. Here, Rachel Hill lines it up, trying to bend it in, but just sails to the right. Otherwise, Orlando looking for that one goal, but just unable to find it. Great look from Rachel Hill right there. I love Labonta calling for that ball, sending it over the back line to Press, who one touches it into the net. Harris getting a hand on it, but can't keep it from going back into the net. Kristen Press with her sixth goal of the season. Great, great look there for Kristen Press. That one coming in the 60th minute for Utah Royals FC. But here, Emsley sends it in. Morgan, though, gets her shoulder on it. And that one goes out of play. Another opportunity there missed for Orlando. And Vero, great deft touch to get it to A-Rod. Running on, one touches it. Again, Harris getting a hand on it. Can't keep it out of the net. Momentum takes it in. A-Rod's got goal number eight on the season. For Amy Rodriguez and Utah Royals FC, they now have eight wins on the year and 27 points on the season as we take a look at the stats. And Jen, what stands out to you on this one? Shots on goal says it all. We saw end-to-end -end action, but really, Utah dominated, and the shots on goal says it right there. Look at Ashlyn Harris. She did a good job there in goal for Orlando. You even look at those two goals scored by Press and Amy Rodriguez. Was able to get a hand on it, but not able to do enough to steer it away from target. But for the Utah Royals FC, they next will play on Wednesday at Washington. That one, 7.30 Eastern for the Orlando Pride. They will be playing Chicago. That one also Wednesday at 7.30 on Yahoo. Another great week coming up in NWSL action. But tonight for the Royals, they get another victory. Their third on the road of the season for our crew. Jim Cooper, myself, Josh Toll, Orlando falls to Utah 2-0.
This broadcast is presented by authority of the National Women's Soccer League and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the National Women's Soccer League.